So then the rift framing is starting to frame off at that cusp right there. Is that how the, the joists are going across? And then the sidewalls, I think, are something that we really got to yeah, look at. Dave Swanson and Brian Matsumoto are structural engineers, and we're at Fife High School close to I-5. The oldest part of this school date back when there wasn't much thought given to making buildings earthquake resistant. This is a good example of what would you typically see as a 1950s classroom building where there's a lot of windows and you know there's a wall pier that provides some lateral support but in a more modern building you'd see more wall piers. The engineers work for Reed Middleton out of Everett, a company hired by the state to inspect the first 220 school buildings statewide for how they would hold up in an earthquake. Outside, geophysicists, including Travis West from the Washington State Geological Survey, send shockwaves through the ground. Waves that can be picked up by geophones. An analysis of that data can show just how solid or not the ground is holding up the school, how much shaking the school would have to endure in various earthquake scenarios. So we're good to go. $1.2 million covers the first 220 school buildings. Responsibility for the program is with the Department of Natural Resources, headed by Hillary Franz. Acceleration is going to be purely based on funding, right? So our hope is we will be coming back next biennium with a $5 million request. We would be looking. The structural assessment involves a lot of detail. You know, we'd be looking at you know, floor plans on how the building's arranged, how well the walls are connected to the floor, how well the walls are connected to the roof. Some schools may need to be replaced. Others have major retrofit work. More modern schools or those far from fault lines may already be in good shape. It's information for state education officials and school boards who will have to come up with the money. One legislator helping drive it is Representative Norma Smith from Whidbey Island. It's information that will help illuminate decision making for our local districts. I served on a school board. I know that how helpful that would have been for me. Now this is all about figuring out what we don't know. And the buildings being assessed are just those that are being used for teaching, actually housing students. It also include things like cafeterias, not just classrooms and gymnasiums, but not structures like administration buildings, that would actually double the amount of, but right now it's for the kids, oh. but it's gonna take a while. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the science here. Right. Do we know everything about the faults? No, and that's the problem. So they are trying to get a better handle on, okay, I've got a school here, it was built in 1945, how is that gonna fit in, and I've got a fault close by, versus a school, say, in northeastern Washington where that risk is gonna be less severe. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those are going to go into it. They're looking at 220 school buildings now, but they're spread around. They can get an idea of where that is. Okay, we looked at this school close to a fault. This school we didn't look at, but it was about the same vintage. But we don't know a lot about the faults. Remember last week we were down with scientists looking for the um, Doty Fault. Mm -hmm. We kind of know where it's there. It was mapped back in the 50s, but we don't know what it's doing underground. Mm -hmm. And there could be some prizes, maybe not, but we just don't know yet. Okay, keep us posted. Glenn, thank you.